I'm going to compare both of these dial calipers. One of them is Michitoya and one of them is Pittsburgh, so Harbor Freight. The Michitoya is probably about a $150 pair of calipers, give or take a little bit, probably a little bit more. These are carbide faced. And then this is the pair of Pittsburghs. First glance, they look actually quite a lot different. This has a looks to be like a cast frame and just as soon as you pick it up and you move the Mitch Toya, it's it's buttery smooth it really is and then you move over to the Pittsburgh it's definitely not as smooth now that that really doesn't matter whenever you're measuring things as long as it produces a good measurement so we're gonna check it on this quarter inch end mill the shank is ground to be very accurate so first we'll check it with the Pittsburgh and that is measuring right on 250 thousandths. So we'll check it, see if that measurement is the same across both of them. And that appears to be right on as well. Right on 250 thou. Maybe a tenth under. So they're very close, but there is a slight difference. It's always important to clean the anvils by putting a piece of paper in between them, lightly grabbing them, and then pulling that paper out so the anvils are clean. If you have any kind of dirt or burrs on them, you won't get an accurate measurement. It's going to sit there. So always do that before you measure a part, and that's still at the same measurement at 250 thou. On the Michitoya dial caliper, it's definitely, I'd say probably about three-tenths under 250 thou which is three tenths different than what the Pittsburgh measured, which I mean, that, that's actually, I mean, that's something. What I'm interested in is why this is so much stiffer. It's, it's really not as smooth. You can see how it kind of moves, kind of like it's scraping. So I'm curious if maybe there's some, some burrs in there, maybe some grinding dust. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear this apart and with a honing stone, just smooth polish all the surfaces inside of there and see if that'll really smooth up the action. I'll remove the stop on the back of it. Then the back piece comes off and the front piece falls off. Now the whole assembly should just pull straight out the back without those stops in place anymore. There's the rack up top where the pinion gear rides along. There's a little spring that goes up there. It's a, like a friction plate. You can see how it's worn right there. That goes in there. Whenever this sits in place, it pushes down like that and keeps friction between here, kind of pushes it up. We'll pull off that little plastic piece that holds the thumb wheel in place. I'm using a flat honing stone. It's very fine grit. So I polish up the ways where this is gonna be sliding back and forth on just to smooth them up a little bit. And also I'm just gonna barely hit the corner here just the slightest bit so it'll if there are any burrs here it'll smooth those over whenever i first put it on the stone and start dragging it it's actually not very smooth it feels like it's cutting which is a good thing that means that it's going to smooth that surface up a bit just cleaning all the surfaces where it rides it's looking real good i'm using an even finer stone on the corners and i, I actually do feel some burrs there every once in a while you'll feel it catch one there's a pretty good sized burr right here on the end of the inside calipers. I mean, it's big enough I can catch my nail on that. So I'm gonna try to grind that away. And that burr is completely gone now. I'm gonna polish the tension spring a little bit. I'm just trying to polish every surface that's gonna be in contact and moving. I'm gonna blow the rack out with a bit of air, make sure there's no chips in there. I'm gonna start the reassembly process and hopefully it's a bit smoother. Let's just carefully start to slide that in place. These little set screws adjust the spring tension, so I'm just getting that right so it's not too tight. Just after reassembling it and getting it moving around a little bit, it does feel like it's moving smoother. I would say that is. I'm able to really get that to spin consistently, which was a challenge before, so I'm liking that. This is 100% synthetic lubricant. It's really good for say clock oil. It's a very thin oil, it's very precise. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of this to the mechanism. 
I might make it move a little bit smoother. You really only need a tiny bit on here because it'll really spread. I'll put the thumb screw on just so I can move it around a bit easier. With everything on, with the thumb screw installed, it, it, it actually feels just the same. I don't really feel any difference from what it felt like before. I'll reinstall that stop on the back. After we got everything assembled and thumb screw back on, I really don't feel a difference. So it feels the same, still kind of scratchy. As long as it produces a good measurement, that's all that matters. But man, whenever you pick up the Michitoyas, they, whew, I mean, it's just such a big difference between the feel of it. I'm not sure how they do it, but it is just, wow. I mean, it, it's so much smoother. Last step is to calibrate this back to zero. So we'll just clean up the anvils. And then we'll loosen up this screw down here at the bottom and this whole dial spins. We'll bring that right to zero. And tighten that back up. And this is recalibrated. And when we check it with the end mill, it's right there on 50 where it was before. So we know that it's back to where it used to be. So it's always cool to see what's inside of the caliper, how it works and the mechanism behind it. I was hoping to be able to get it smoother, but as long as it gives me an accurate measurement, that's really what matters. Now, I'd say for the price difference, I mean, this is a pretty nice pair of calipers for $20, and then for $150, you can get a little bit better. So I'd, if it's worth it, if you wanna get a $150 pair of calipers that's very smooth, then you probably wanna go with the Mitch Toyas, but for 20 bucks, you can get a pretty good pair of calipers that isn't quite as smooth, but still gives you an accurate measurement.